Isabel Vasquez remembers the final moments of her mother's struggle with COVID-19, how the pain was too much to endure. In June, her mother went to hospital with an intestinal infection. The family believes she contracted the virus during her treatment. It was very painful when they told me that news, she says. My mother cried out, no more. Their suburb of Mexico City has been hit especially hard. Seven people on their street have died. A lot of people continue as if nothing is happening, because they haven't lived it firsthand like we have lived it. Mexico has more than half a million cases and is third in the world in deaths, with close to 60,000. But the fear is that number is actually two to three times higher, because mass testing is rare in Mexico. Kiosks like this, set up by Mexico City's mayor, are the exception rather than the rule. It's a challenge to try to convince a patient who may have minimal symptoms to go and get tested and seek early medical attention. Adding to that challenge, President Andrés Manuel López Obrador. He rarely wears a mask, argues testing isn't necessary, and says prayer and good luck charms will protect him. Experts say Mexico's lax approach is a calculated risk because the country's economy is in large part made up of poor, unregulated workers who can't afford shutdowns and quarantines. I think it's been a little haphazard. However, um, I would say that in essence, they didn't really have all that many choices. Another challenge, a fear of hospitals, rooted in historic mistrust of doctors and an often inadequate public health care system. There'll be another uh, increase again. Canadian doctor Mandeep Dillon works at a public hospital east of Mexico City. I think it, it almost seems as though um, the response from the government has been, well, let's just resign ourselves to the fact that lots of people are going to die of this and at some point, you know, we'll be through it. The country's health minister claims this week that the worst may be over, saying the outlook is positive, a clear downward slope. But that's a small comfort in a country where, like so many places, the poor are paying the highest cost, and the virus's true toll may not be known for months or years to come. Stephen D'Souza, CBC News, New York.